allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So our first order of business would be to act on the minutes of August 25th. Any errors or omissions? We can actually do it by general consent if there's no, if there's no, but I, pre I appreciate the consent and that brings up a great process point. As long as there's no objections or there are any, occasionally we'll find something that's been omitted inadvertently from the minutes and, and that would be a great time to add that. This is Crystal. Um, Tammy, do you also go by Bolio? No. There's no. Okay. okay. I saw on 8.6. And I feel like I may have seen it a couple of other times. Yes, that could be because that used to be my name <coughs> years ago. Ah, okay. And that right. could be because the secretary knew her with that other name. Oh, she probably just, yeah. just, probably probably like, just typed it in. Yeah. So, okay. I'm I didn't sorry. Even see. I didn't even, like, huh? I read them and didn't even notice. No. Whoa, that's wild. Like, well, it's correct two points later. You got it. You got, yeah, I was going to say you got it right. Two down. So. Jimmy Child, Lee, same place, same person. Uh, I just want to thank you all. Um, you know, I don't really have a lot to, to say, really. Um, I've said a lot in the past year, but I just want to re reiterate how thankful I am to all the educators and the principals, um, you know, all you guys for what you do. Um, we're living through tough times, and I think to navigate through certain things in life. Um, you, know, you, guys, you can maybe work together or I'm sure behind the scenes maybe there's stuff going on, you know, stuff I've talked about, maybe people have give thought to and um, different things on way to protect our kids in all different ways, you know, and uh, from any form of child abuse and neglect and anything that they don't need. So I just want to thank you all. Anyone else with comments this evening? If not, we move on to communications. Okay. So I'll report some resignations. Kathleen O'Neill, who uh, is the Levitt Area Custodian, effective 915. Melanie North, Adult Education Curriculum Coordinator Instruction, uh, effective 912. And then these are resignations, but they're people who are transferring internally to other <coughs> jobs. So Paula Coyne. Um, transferred from bus aid to van driver. Audrey Spear, Turner Primary Special Education Ed Tech 2, transferring to Ed Tech 3, still in Turner Primary. Kylie Greenwood, I feel like this one might have gotten reported in the last one, it rings familiar. She was an Ed Tech 3 in at Turner Elementary, has transferred into teacher role. And Melissa Wing, Green Central School Ed Tech 2, transferring to Ed Tech 3 at Tripp Middle School. Do we have any adjustments to the agenda? And again, that brings us to committee reports, finance. I'll turn that one over to you, Crystal. Okay. Um, the finance committee 
um, we just had our first um, meeting. We, um, there's two items on the agenda this evening, 8.5 and 8.6, which we will be going into a little bit more detail. Um, we discussed, um, there were some copiers that were added to Tripp Middle School and And we had to finance those, and we are financing with Gorham Leasing Group for four years at a 4.06% um, rate. We also discussed the um, wood chip boiler, which has come up a couple of times, I think within the last year or two, which um, the repairs are two years overdue. And it's already budgeted in our repair line um, for $21,985, which um, we're hoping will be underway soon and has to be done before the start of the heating season. We reviewed um, June um, financial reports. Um, our lovely Gabby is getting everything all squared away and um, getting us up to date. And that we had some discussion around ESSER funding and invoicing and getting that all set so that we are compensated for our um, government funds and then we had a lot of warrants to sign for payroll and accounts um, payable that's, that was our since June since June <laughs> yes June through August <laughs> and that was the condensed version of finance committee thank you mm -hmm. and certainly committee members when we get to those agenda items we have some more insight on those and I'd take an opportunity to thank Thank Gabby for her diligent work thus far, <coughs> and as Finance Committee learned this evening, there's lots, you know, when we have gaps in positions, there's lots of lots of work to be done. So thank you, Gabby and Carrie, for working working along on that and continuing to make sure that we're in in good standing and, and that work continues. Plant Transportation Building, that meet, next meeting is scheduled for 9.22 at 5.30 p.m. Curriculum policy, that next meeting is also 9.22, 5.30 p.m. Drum roll, please. <laughs> student representatives report. Not only do we have one, we have two student representatives, which is actually what our policy suggests that we should have, but I think it's been, it's been a day or two since we've, had, since we've had two, so it's delightful to have you both here this evening. We have Mayla Madison and Sydney Bullard, so I'm gonna turn it over to you two so you can give us some insight into the wonderful world of the high school. Rock, paper, scissors is a perfectly acceptable means of deciding who goes first. So we're just getting underway with the school year, but we're getting ready to start with homecoming next week. Um, theme days have been planned, and our theme for float this year is board games. Um, the school implemented a new cell phone policy this year, or like reinstated it, and uh, it's been going well so far, I think. Um, and yeah, everything's just getting underway. I think it's going to be a good year. Excellent. Well, welcome, and I know that uh, Principal Shaw and Superintendent Penn have given you some idea what to expect on board meetings. Don't don't be shy. It's really it's really helpful for the board to hear student perspective. I mean, the students are or why we're here, so it's definitely helpful to hear your perspective from a process standpoint. When we have motions that board members are voting on, you may certainly vote on those. That's not, we don't have to get out our calculators and figure out the weighted votes based on based on your votes as well, but your votes will be recorded, recorded in the minutes. And when we get to the point where we have any executive sessions or any confidential information, that's not, that's not stuff that you folks have to worry about. We'll, wander off and find a spot where we can conduct that business. But again, we'll look forward to hearing reports on what's up for exciting activities and I'm um, fascinated to hear about those board games. Board <laughs> float, so thank you. Brings us to administrator reports. We'll start with Ms. O. Can I just say yes. one thing? So I would just like to indicate, so for those of you who are new to the board, you won't know any different, but for those of you who've been on the board, um, it's my understanding that there haven't been any kind of written regular reports from administrators that they have participated in meetings or been at meetings in case there's questions. 
Um, so I have asked them to start writing a monthly report for you all about what's going on in their school, giving you information. Um, this first template that you see is something that I came up with, you know, basing on Jana used to have to do a monthly report in Lewiston, I used to have to do a monthly report in Poland, so the two of us are like, well, okay, this is what we used to talk about. If there are things, feedback from you guys about what would be helpful, like if there's something here that you really would like to know on a regular basis and you'd like us to sort of address that or something, we can alter it so that you have that information. And then my intention is not for the administrators to read them to you because you're getting them ahead of time, but to answer questions and then potentially to just offer maybe something that may have come up between the time they wrote it and now, or something in here that they're particularly proud of or want to make sure they're really emphasized that they might share that. So it's a good time you know, to ask them questions or not if it's all self-explanatory and then for them to just offer a couple of items. So it's not really a presentation. It's as much, you know, it's like giving you a regular source of information about what's happening in the school. So half of them, so this is the group that will come that will do this one. And then the other administrators will be at the 22nd. And the goal is that they'll be here. They'll be doing a report monthly, but it won't be all at one time because that'd be a lot of them for you guys to read. And sort of sometimes two weeks, there's not a lot of different things to report necessarily. So any feedback, you know, once we start into this process, but I do think it was, I feel like it's important for you guys to hear sort of some detailed information from them on a regular basis since they're really doing the work that needs to happen with the kids. So feedback and all that would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Sean? Well, I got, I got a couple of highlights that, that I'll point out. Um, we welcomed the, the ninth graders uh, last week uh, and it was uh, it was a great day, and uh, they were engaged from the time they got there until the time that they went home. And uh, we had a number of upper class students that were there to help uh, facilitate different group activities, um, and that also went really well. Uh, the The weather was rainy, but stopped when it was supposed to, so we were able to get outside, uh, and that was super helpful. Um, I would just like to. I want to thank um, the faculty and staff at the high school as well as the students for such a smooth start to the year and it's, it's through their efforts that, that that's the case. Um, and as, as uh, Sidney pointed <coughs> out, we have uh, homecoming next week and uh, it seems pretty straightforward. You have your dress up days and you have your theme for the homecoming floats until the dress up day conflicts with picture day. <laughs> and then, then you have to do something a little different. So we made an adjustment midstream uh, today so that uh, we wouldn't have a bunch of people looking like Adam Sandler in the yearbook. Uh, <laughs> so we made that adjustment today. Uh, and then one other thing that uh, has come about since, or have been, has been confirmed, confirmed since I typed this up uh, last week, we will be hosting the Maine Supreme Judicial Court uh, at the high school on October 5th. Uh, they will be coming in, uh, setting up court in the auditorium for the day uh, and hearing three uh, appellate cases um, and we will we'll be able to uh, get groups of students in there to, to watch the process. Uh, so I've been working with a representative from the judicial court, and uh, it's, it's going to be a good day. I got, the, I got the background information on the cases yesterday, uh, late yesterday afternoon. Um, there's some interesting stuff there. We're going to have to prep the kids up on what they're going to see, because it's, it's real life. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. So mine was short and sweet because we had to have it in on Friday <laughs> last week, so there was only a couple of days. Um, so just updated the, the enrollment. Um, similar to what Mr. Shaw was saying, Wednesday we received seventh graders, and I know that there was a lot of anxiety for a lot of students. We tried to front load that last year by having a couple activities where students could come and get to meet their advisors and their teams. Um, and just let them know after a day or two what seems big and overwhelming is, is going to get a little bit easier to navigate. We're already seeing that happen for a lot of them. Um, Wednesday with our seventh graders was a really great day. We did a group crew at the end of, of the day. We, we used that for a locker challenge because getting into their lockers is one of the things that most of them were most anxious about. And so um, we hid parts of a 
pieces of a puzzle in, in their lockers without them knowing and then they had to, when I said go, get into their locker and get the pieces and then assemble it with their their crew and ultimately take a, a selfie and then send it. And so um, just some ways to, to get them acclimated and, and ease some of the, the anxiety. And then we welcomed eighth graders back um, on Thursday and that energy was a whole nother level <laughs> with them being the, the big kids in the building. But it was awesome. We've had a really, really good start to, to school, so I'm very, very happy about that. Awesome. Question. Yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, is, is the, what is the crew model? Uh, just a little quick background on that. Is it like team building? It's, it's advisory homeroom. It's the same yeah. teacher in the beginning, but we have the classes uh, HPT. But like at the end of the day, it's a half an hour, and it's just a time to start building some of the, the habits of character. Um, the, the focus this week this week is right versus cool and how to make doing the right thing cool. Awesome. And so we give them some scenarios and they talk through it. So if they were to come up on that situation, they might have had some talking points or some ways to navigate it. Next week we're talking about respect and like what that looks like, but it's not lecture style. It's circle right. up in a small group and then they do a lot of activities. And Fridays, we usually do like a survivor style challenge where each crew competes against each other for reward, um, just to end the week on a really fun note. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you. <coughs> Hello. Um, so it's been a great start. Um, I love being at a primary school, <laughs> and it's just full of cuteness. Um, <laughs> I had a ninja the other day in the school, so that was excellent. Um, our start was great. I am just impressed with these kids, and they just we started sort of back to what was done previously prior to COVID as far as protocols, arrival, dismissal. Um, the parents have been fabulous. We have gone from, I think it We've cut like 35 minutes off dismissal time, so mm. that's excellent. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so that makes everybody happy. Um, and just we've we've done a lot with our PBIS as the positive behavior and supports with the students. Then we had our first assembly all together, um, which was exciting. Uh, I think the staff is just really happy to be getting back into those routines. Um, I do, it's just been super positive. I go, like my husband said, you come home smiling every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> um, our enrollment dropped a little bit from what I had first indicated. We're down, I think we have 316 students now. But you can see our K and pre-K are, are good classes. Um, we put a lot of things in place to support the kiddos coming in, and it's been very successful. Any questions? So I, th I see all three schools <clears throat> had PD with Chris McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. Who is Chris McLaughlin? Or am I supposed to know who he is? Could you tell us about his credentials? Uh, I don't know if they get all the letters right there after his name, but I think he's a licensed clinical social, social worker, worker and okay. some, something else. But he has a consulting company yeah. that we have utilized past three. Not two years for sure. Two or three yeah. years. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you for your Moving on to <coughs> Yes, um, we've also been off to a great start. And um, I think the most exciting thing that I didn't put into my report was about our new instructional coach because that has just been amazing. And the energy around that with my teachers is so good right now. And people are really looking forward to working with her and all the great things that she's going to do to help them raise the level of their work that they're doing with, with the students. And she's already, we're about six days in, and she's already working on our response to intervention. Where she's really focusing on math, which we haven't had the ability to focus on before. Um, she's put things in place for teachers to be able to just, or ed techs to help the teachers by pulling kids for 10 minutes to work on a particular skill and then help them get back in and be more successful in class. And we're feeling really positive and really excited about that whole, um, that whole position and what the possibilities are with it. And I am too as a principal because I know she's going to help me with my professional development as well this year. So it's super exciting for me.
just a reminder to board members, as uh, Superintendent Ed indicated, if you have other other thoughts on how this framework can be most helpful to, to make these reports, you know, worth worthwhile and, and worth everyone's time, so we don't don't be shy about sharing those thoughts. But it's a great start. Thank you. Great to hear positive starts in lots of places. That brings us to the assistant superintendent's report. Teresa. Unless it's like a question that might like take a little bit more time and I can sort of front load that, but if it's clarifying questions or just can you say a little bit about a little bit more about a person or something, okay. those are those are fine. Okay. It's just if there's like something bigger, like oh okay, that needs a whole nother conversation, then yeah. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so I would like to report on three of the programs that I work with in the district. The first is ELL, or I believe it's now being called the Multilingual Program. We have a total of two part-time staff, um, equaling six days between the two of them. The number of students that are being serviced, we have 15 direct service student and students and three students who are on monitor across four of our six schools. And the programming for um, our multilingual program is that identified students are provided support based on their language skills and needs. So each spring, our ELL students are assessed using the state, uh, well, it's more than the state, but the access assessment. And then these assessments are used to determine qualifications for services, as well as specific strengths and weaknesses. Individual language plans are written for each student, and then the services are provided accordingly and most of our um, services, well, they're actually split. Um, they may be pull-out, in-class support, and some students may receive both, depending on what their language needs are. Our gifted and talented program is now staffed by two full-time teachers. Um, the number of students, we have 118 identified students across uh, five schools, grades fourth through 12th currently. Um, and for the programming, the GT program provides services to qualifying students in math, reading, writing, and visual performing arts. Students are nominated by their teachers, parents, or they can even self-refer. We have a website um, that explains all that process. And then in addition to the nomination, um, so for example, if I nominated a student, the students would then be assessed with varied uh, tests. We use NWA scores in the COGAT. They might be observed and uh, input from their teachers would be gathered as well. A selection committee is made up of teachers, GT staff, and administrators, and it's a blind selection process. So we get the information about the student, but we don't know their name or anything about them other than their grade level and their student data. And then families are notified of the outcome after this process. Individual learning plans are written for each student with services provided accordingly. Services for this are mostly pull-out services. And primarily our focus um, is really on, has been on fourth through eighth grade because it's a high school students are able to start taking more varied courses. So they still keep that GT identification and we've worked with Mr. Shaw around uh, supporting them in terms of college exploration and some things that the guidance counselors <coughs> do as well, but it sometimes um, just is another person to help support them. New this year, we're expanding uh, gifted and talented services to students in grade three, so all the principals and the teachers have been notified, and so those applications um, might start rolling in. It is an open enrollment, and we do a couple of um, academic identifications during the year, and usually at least one of visual and performing arts. And then last, but certainly not least, um, instructional coaches. So we now have six full-time coaches across each of our schools. Three of our coaches are fully trained through Maine Partnerships and Comprehensive Literacy that's at the University of Maine. Um, three are in their training year, and I know today they had a course, three of them. So as of today, coaching support is or has currently been provided to 35 teachers and support staff um, across our six schools. And this is just six days into the start of the school year. I'm anticipating the number will increase in the coming weeks. So that's my report. Thank you. 
substitute for trace back. Thank you for the update. Look forward to hearing more about those as the year goes on. Over to the superintendent's report. Yep, so I reported what I thought our, what our population was right before school started. So we're a little bit lower than before, but it's still 2024, still 103 students above last year absolutely back to pre-pandemic levels. Um, so that was, I feel like that's a really good recovery of like now we're back, sort of those numbers look the way that it, they were prior to all of that. Um, as everybody said, the opening of school was awesome. We had all the staff in the auditorium last Monday, breakfast, sort of the way it used to be, even though a whole bunch of us weren't here for that. <laughs> but we kept, like, the, there was some good uh, roadmaps left behind for us to sort that out and obviously Teresa's Knowledge, but we were able to celebrate all the new staff as well as those who uh, for years of service and we had one staff member recognized for 35 years of service and that's Lori Hersey so I'd like to say a, give a shout out to her um, and then Teresa and I participated and joined the bullying prevention training that happened for middle school and high school staff um, so that we could see that and observe um, I was able to get to all the schools in that first week to see arrival as a high school person. I had never seen an elementary arrival. It's a miracle of like a well-oiled machine and safety. It was amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I know this first? I would have done things differently. So it was, it was really sweet. And to see those, kinder, those kindergartners at Turner Private, I was there. <laughs> And Kim was like, oh my God, these kids just line up. And I'm like, they do, they just line right. up. And they were quiet and waiting and patient. It was so awesome, it was fantastic. Uh, in terms of, uh, oh, and then I'm happy to report that I do not need my GPS anymore to get around the district. I haven't learned it all. And I'm like, yes. Uh, so for open positions, we have, we just, a, I'll highlight a couple. We need a computer technician for our tech, um, our tech director, tech department. We. Lost the one from middle school, so we're, we've got our two, plus Wally, who's the director, obviously. So I think feeling the pinch there, for sure. Um, we need an occupational therapist and a social worker to special ed. Our OT person resigned right before the school year started, so we are scrambling a little bit for there. We actually have 15 ed tech positions open as of this morning, uh, which, you know, is not awesome, 15. I've, I've heard worse, but 15 is a lot. Um, I do know that there were interviews. We have three, almost maybe four custodian positions open, but I know that Dave Coburn and Tina did interviews today. So hopefully some of those will be filled. We do need two teachers at the high school and a dean of students, but I think those have been or will be interviewed soon. Uh, primary teacher at TPS interviews are, are oh, underway. Nice. And then I know we need two teachers at adult ed. And did I hear you were introducing maybe one person? I interviewed somebody today. Beautiful. So we're making progress. The ed text, I don't know how much progress we're making there, but we are making progress on those key positions that are open. And then I started my monthly meetings with principals, uh, met with um, Kristen Lebeck and Danielle this week. We start our um, bi-monthly ed leadership team meetings next week, principals, Teresa and I, and Rebecca, um, to work on teacher evaluation, student behavior things, emergency planning, all the things that we've got on our agenda for this week for this year so I have two other items in there for you is one is if you recall when we did the training with Steve Bailey he sort of offered a communication agreement that might be something for you and myself and the board to sort of come to agreement on so I sort of typed up it's pretty much what he provided for us as a sample so I just wanted to put that in there if there was any feedback on that but if you know, that would be sort of a working document for me to be able to sort of make sure that I'm reminding myself to tell you guys stuff that needs to happen and those kinds of things. So if there's any feedback on that or anything that you um, want to make sure that we add to that. The second thing is a draft of my goals. And so I won't go through the full detail then, but I'll, I'll give you the sort of the highlights. Um, so I think the very first thing that's my very first goal, and this was very clear in the interview process, is sort of like a recommitment to the to the um, strategic plan that was, you know, so much time and energy was put into it when it was designed, and then the pandemic sort of put the brakes on a lot of that stuff. Although, as I, you know, as I look through it and learn more, there are things that have been taken, that have been accomplished. So um, my goal is to make sure that I can gather as much information as I can to then start to report on a regular basis. 
what is being, what has been accomplished, and if there's any kind of, you know, adjustment to some of the goals because we've done one piece of it, but now need to move into the next direction. So that's going to be some of the conversation that um, the Ed leadership team has also with our operations and finance folks. Um, some really quality people in the operations finance world. I'm just going to say that it's really exciting. I think a lot of good things are going to are going to happen in the non-instructional life of this district that I think need a lot of attention, and there's some really, really high quality people who are doing that. Yeah. How, how old is Regis Plan? 2019, was it 2019-19? So not that old, but it's, like got shut down pretty quick. Yeah, it's a five-year plan, so it's through 2024. Right. Uh, the next goal that I have in here is um, from the strategic plan talks about a system of recruitment and retention of highly qualified effective stance, uh, staff enhancing systems of support for all. So instructional coaches were actually a part of that plan back in 2019. Um, we have contract negotiations this year with the with teachers and so I think that's another opportunity to, to grow um, leadership within the district and to use that. Um, that agreement to accomplish some of that and then um, working closely with Teresa to um, help support and build the instructional coaching sort of infrastructure that will I think provide a lot of good support for new employees new teachers you've seen the large number of people who move from an ed tech position to a teacher position and oftentimes People don't fully understand all that's involved in the job if they've been in that ed tech role, and then all of a sudden they turn, they go to, they cross the border, and it's a much bigger thing. And just providing, making sure people are there because we need to hold that. If that's going to be a big population of our teachers going forward, we need to make sure that they're supported and can actually grow into the job with with a lot of help. The third goal is around the whole operation side of the district: business manager, facilities, transportation. Um, and uh, the technology director spend, <coughs> spending a decent amount of time with all three of them, um, as well as Teresa with Wally in particular, um, to just make sure they're getting what they need and they have the support from me to, to do the things that need to happen. So um, there's just resiliency within the system and transparency and those kinds of things all need to be built into the system and having some long-range long plans that have not really been in place pandemic wise or because of like transition of personnel, people not being here, you know, over time things just sort of start to get left behind a little bit when there's not a person in that role. So it's some of that's just the natural piece of that. So um, that's gonna be a big piece of where I spend a lot of my time in working with those folks. And then the last one is around teacher evaluation and professional growth. The plan was put into place in 2017, 18. I can't remember the exact date, but when the law changed in Maine, everybody had to do that. And it, it's just time for a review and a re revision of it. Um, the standards that we adopted for that have now been updated by um, the organization that we use those standards from, Danielson, which is a common one that a lot of schools are using. They've been rewritten and revised, so it's a good opportunity to sort of step back a little bit and look at those and then make clarify some things that aren't really very clear in the plan right now. Now that there's a lot of learning that's happened and um, people have used the system for a while, we have a lot to learn from it and can make some improvements. So that's going to be another area that I tackle. So those are the highlights of the four, four areas. Questions on any of those? Can I go back to your report real quick? Yep. So you reported vacancies at Levitt, primary school, and adult ed. Do you have numbers for any teacher vacancies at Green, Mead, or TEA? No, those They're are the only also? teacher. Those are the only teacher vacancies. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? If not, thank you for the level of detail in the goals presentation. I mean, I think this this makes the board's work much much more straightforward as far as everyone being at least nearby the same page on. So what exactly is it when the board gets to its response, completing its responsibility of evaluating the superintendent? So that's much, that's much appreciated. As far as the communications agreement, is that something that you are, are anticipating you would like some sort of board action to agree to that? Or is this something where 
the folks are all. I would defer to you if you need to vote on it or just general, like, yeah, that looks okay. General agreement. It's it's not a policy, so it's not you know there's not that step of technicality to it. It's not <coughs> terribly complicated. It's it matches pretty much what Steve Bailey had presented to folks as kind of a suggested framework. I'm seeing lots of head nodding. If that's if the head nodding is the case, then certainly we could have that kind of as general consent that folks are all aware that these are the expectations around communication. And again, giving us a little bit more clarity around what to what's expected of us as a board and what and what we're expecting from the superintendent as well. So thank you for that. That brings us to old business, which we don't actually have any of. Let's try new business. Uh, instructional nominations. I'm hoping we have those for the next meeting. Okay, we left it on there in hopes that some would come, but if not yet. If you build it, they will. Yes. <laughs> so we'll report that for next time. 8.2, consideration and action to accept donations. And our first one, 8.2.1, Trip Middle School Scoreboard. Who wants to, who wants to address this one? Invite your chairman. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did some follow up from the uh, conversations with the previous meeting regarding the, the scoreboard. I don't know if now is the time to get into the logistics of that, but in the meantime, um, we are asking the board to recognize the donations that were put into place for the school for the scoreboard to be purchased, um, and that is being built as we speak. Um, some was done through fundraising, and then I don't have the list in front of me, and some was done through donations, um, either personal donations of community members or local organizations. And and board members actually have, have that list, so we okay. have the list. There were eight different entities that, for a grand total of $9,546.56, uh, and they included A1 Seamless Gutters, Spencer Group, Haven, Evergreen Subaru, Jimmy's General Store, Doug Kahn, Gilbert Plumbing Works, Calvin Ulan, and Trip Middle School Football. So folks are aware of the kind of support that's out there. That's a pretty significant amount of money. After our last meeting, it occurred to me, I'm like, I thought we have to accept the donation first and then talk about the advertising. So we got a little, we got a little backwards in the process, so we so cleaned that up a little so bit. So we're on the improving, we're <laughs> accepting the donation yes. stage right now. Yes. And then so this is not about the advertising and all the that. The other stuff. pieces yeah. of the advertising yeah. will be, right, we'll, yeah. be, we'll be talking about that in additional detail. Do we have a motion to accept the donation? So moved. Joan, do we have a second? I'll second. Crystal, <laughs> thank you. Discussion on this, Anthony. So I'm curious, does the expenditure to do what needs to be done with the school board, the school scoreboard, mm -hmm. is that above and beyond the budget, the operating budget of the of MSCB 52? The scoreboard was in the budget, and when the budget did not pass, it was one of the pieces that was taken out of the budget, and so the community wanted to put a fundraiser into place right. to get the, the board, to, to raise the money for the scoreboard, and, and so that's where we're at now with the, the board approving the donation so that we can have the scoreboard. Okay, so if I can continue. So in order, so and I'm I'm not trying to be obstructive, but I'm just curious about how how we procedurally do this so that we fulfill the letter of the law, right? So the the school's operating budget is approved by the town, right? We're set at that number. How do we how do we go above that? If if it's a donation that's toward the particular item, I mean those can be achieved in that can it be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but has been historically mm -hmm. certainly. What I understand that, but is that 
should there should there going forward be some kind of proviso or some wording in in the uh, ballot item that the towns are voting on that includes this is this is this budget this is what you're paying for we're asking you to also approve items that might go above and beyond that that we bring in supplementary income through grants or gifts so it's very clear so that that way nobody can ever say but look you we you had a you had a $50 million budget, I'm just throwing it out $50 million budget, you spent $60 million, $10 million should have gone back to the town. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, and actually there are steps that we do within the process, within both that budget vote that enable, legally enable the district to accept donations. Okay. So, so that's a step that has been undertaken by the board, by okay. the district. So we have that legal ability to accept. Very good. Thank things. you. But yes, that's, and so then it becomes a little bit of a matter of communication. So mm -hmm. that, that school board can both say, well, okay, so that wasn't in the budget that I voted for, for example. How did, how did that happen? So then, right. again, the transparency around how did that happen then becomes a bit of our obligation as well, for sure. Great. Just add one more piece because, and this is pretty typical, there has to be an approval of a fundraising. So early on, I got forms where we want to fundraise for this. And so it's pretty typical that there's an approval process, so there's not fundraising for random things that's like, no, we shouldn't actually be raising money for that. So there is a chain that has to go through for fundraising for things like that. I just ask is the motion on 8.2 which includes the two donations or is it are, are you motioning was the motion made to just approve the Trent Middle School scoreboard except the donation wasn't it yes yep. just the, for the scoreboard the right now right. okay so because that's 8.2 okay. yeah that's okay any other discussion on this one <laughs> was that? I didn't see everybody. Was that? I believe it was Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that brings us to eight point two point two, which is on the other side of the paper. I think we're using both sides. <laughs> Terribly efficient. And this is a donation on YouTube box. I believe it's Ozobots because I googled how to say it <laughs> and I practiced along. I hope I remembered it correctly. And actually the amount at the bottom is probably incorrect because we initially had a uh, set of 18. I believe that has now been doubled. So we took the number out um, just because that was a an additional donation by the same anonymous donor. And so I believe if they were brand new, it looked like they would sell for around $6,000. Party. Joe will yeah. talk. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I think we got an expert back there who can help us out. Yes. Other discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And yes, I, that sounds pretty That sounds pretty cool. 8.2.3 other, there are no others. So that brings us to 8.3, consideration and action to approve revisions to the job descriptions. 8.3.1 is mentor. We have a motion on that one. Sure. Kristen, do the second. 
Second. Okay. Okay. Discussion. discussion. Who, yeah, who's the second? Yes, okay. 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 Thanks. Discussion slash background on this one, and just as a matter of working through both policies, job descriptions, anything that's coming out of curriculum policy when we have an existing document, changes are in bold. So as you're reviewing these bold, bold and strikeouts, generally, Teresa, correct me if I'm wrong, but generally that will give you kind of a... Yes, and these are actually not going to curriculum and policy anymore because they really are not curriculum nor policy. But, so. but the convention is the same on, on policy. So when right, see, the strikeout, so yes, the bold and the strikeout, yes, and strike exactly. That's where our changes are. Sorry, and I our hope is to alleviate a little bit of this that takes a lot of time on curriculum policy because part of our goal is to get back up on the curriculum. Now that we've got a normal, sort of get back to some of that, and if we keep the policy committee sort of with all of these things, it will be really difficult to get all that done, so. Discussion on this one, the mentor. Any questions on this one? All those in favor? And I abstain. Oh, sorry. One abstain, sorry. Who was the abstain? Anthony. My peripheral vision is need to work on that. Brings us to facility supervisor. We have a motion on that one. Jessica, need a second. Crystal. Discussion on this one. Jamie. Um, so the part in bold, does that refer to just their bus driver license or their CDL as well? Both are just preferred but not required. They're, <laughs> that's a great question, Jamie. Um, I believe it's the bus driver license, the way that it's written, um, but I can find out for you for sure. And the reason that we made the change is mm -hmm. that, as you know, it's difficult to employ people and having all these um, specific certifications was making it particularly difficult. I just was saying, the wording was... I so agree. If you put it on, we might want to specify what we're referring to. <coughs> yep. Good point. Other questions or discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? All opposed? So we'll just edit it to make it clear that it's the bus driver that's licensed, yes. right? My understanding that this started last spring when there was difficulty in trying to get a technology director, so it's just finalizing that with a um, softening of the language around network administration and that not being 100% necessary. Because again, similar to the bus driver, this was, was perceived to be a big <coughs> point in my mind, it looks like it's also using a consultant to support that anyway, which I think is where the industry is going. So. Other questions or discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? And it appears to be unanimous. Thank you. There's no other, other, other no. on there? That brings us to 8.4, consideration and action to approve out-of-state games for all sports at Levitt Area High School. Motion on that one. So moved. Crystal. We have a second. I'll second. Joe. Discussion on this one. Just. Is this new? Th this is an annual thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have. You're just 
super Thank organized this year me. that it's early in the year. <laughs> Mark is back at work, and yeah. she's the one who yeah. feels like, oh, this has to go on. They just cover this in case we have a team that needs to go out of state. And I think we have two scheduled hockey games at this point. Um, but you never know when something's going to pop up and we have to go to New Hampshire, and we need approval to do that. Thank you. Other questions or discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor? Well. Sure thing, Gabby. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was a lapse in the business manager for almost two months, and in coming in, we're just I'm trying to clean up fiscal year 22 and get everything under control. Um, in our meeting today, we discussed that the transportation cost center within the warrant line items was over uh, approximately $62,000, and that can be easily covered by another cost center. I am recommending that we cover that from the special education cost center. That is within the um, board's abilities to vote to move money as long as it's within 5% of each cost center. So that's the recommendation to make it even and not overdrawn. Questions, discussion? I have a question. No. You said, I, I'm having trouble hearing some of you tonight. Oh. Um, so, did you say cost center? E each warrant line item is considered a cost center, or okay. not warrant line item, but the warrant grouping is a cost center. So, special education is a cost center, transportation right. is a cost center, facilities. Yes. Okay. It's terminology I'm not familiar with. Don't worry, I'm it's learning too. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> So you're saying um, the money is there to transfer from yes. one to the other without the special um, education having issues like this? Yes, absolutely. Special education cost center was underspent by a significant amount of money, so okay. we are able to make that move, okay. and it's within the board's 5% ruling okay. abilities. And, and Gabby, just to clarify as mm -hmm. well, this is this is in the process of tying out fiscal year 22. Correct. So yeah. this is not something that would have an impact but on this year, the year that correct. we're in okay. currently. This so is you're taking care of things from the previous correct. year. Correct. Correct. Okay. And that's going to be ongoing for a little bit longer yet. Um, that's not to say that I'm not focusing on 23 as okay. well. But our focus at our finance meeting tonight was <laughs> fiscal year 22 and getting things <coughs> Joe, you had. Well, I was just, um, in my understanding from, from just being in the finance committee meeting, you know, we had a lot of uh, fuel cost increases. Mm -hmm. We had um, a lot of overtime bus drivers, and we ended up really just running over on transportation and uh, had a surplus that was remaining in, in special ed, and we're simply transferring the money over to even things out and close out year 22. Any discussion on this one? one more quick thing for Gabby. This won't like set any precedent for underspending in special education when looking at future budgets, correct? No, it doesn't set any precedent. Um, ideally, I am going to look into why it was so underspent, yeah. but ideally we believe that it had mm -hmm. to do with a lot of vacant positions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions? If not, all those in favor? Brings 
us to 8.6, consideration and action to approve finance committee recommendation to award bid for Trip Middle School copier leasing. Do we have a motion on that one? Jessica and Crystal, is that right? Yeah. Discussion on this one. Those report. Any questions? We Anthony. actually need the name of Anthony. So we're financing this? With the Gabby, do you want to? Um, yes, so it was built into a four year. Um, option of budgeting, so we're going to cover a quarter of it this year, a quarter for the next three years as well, to reduce the overall cost for this particular fiscal year. From what I understand, that's the continuation of, of what's been happening, it's just the end of the, the four years, just starting back up on a new crop year. That's been the practice. Um, I mean, on new purchases of crop years, it, it is typically a practice to do a uh, I'll leave the agreement for it. Uh, several, um, uh, or a couple uh, bids were received for those leases, and we're going with the lowest cost option as well. Thanks for your I'll throw that out there. Should the name of the company we're being we're going with be in the motion? I think that would be. Yeah. We have we have that information. Yes. Would you, yeah. Jessica, are you willing to make that part of your motion? Sure. I need to take it. Okay, no taker is willing to make that adjustment, and that was the Gorham leasing group. Is that correct? Okay. I'm willing <laughs> and able. Jessica, you had a question as well. I don't know if anybody actually knows the answer to this, but I'm just curious what the life expectancy for these photocopiers are. So, if we purchase one and we're not done paying for it for four years, is the life expectancy, I would hope, past that four year mark? I can give you a little bit of, of what the history that, that I know here. We have four copiers, one in the office and one in the each wing. And what we do is, the, I mean, there were over millions. <laughs> it was like Christmas around here, <laughs> like when a new copier comes. And you, we take the ones that were half of their, their life and move them into, into the space um, where the one that was exhausted is moved out of. And, and so that's sort of like the way that we keep the longevity of them going. I don't know if I explained that very well. Um, I think I caught it. So like, so like the one in the main office we had had for two years, right. that moved down into another wing. The one in the office is used the most, moved into another wing for one that was at the end of its, of its life cycle. And so we got two of four copiers. Um, and, and then we moved them around based on, on usage. But as far as as far as the question of how long do these things live, I mean, I think that would be a great that would be a great piece to wrap in when we get to when we get to budget time and yep. we're talking about I'll specific that. items. That mm -hmm. So the number of the copies in. was shared, and that's some of the data that was used to make decisions mm -hmm. about if they some of them were even worth being moved around. And then there's also data collected on how many times they have to come out to be serviced. So it, that that already exists. If you want, I, I just I don't have it. Yep, no problem. problem. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions on on this one? Seeing none. All those in favor? Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Have a copy in. <laughs> and again, as we as we get into. The nuts and bolts <coughs> moving forward with some of those. And I'm sure we'll have the opportunity during the budget process to hear more about those items as we see them in their in their line. And I think Wally Morris also is he's this would be part of his budget, so he's going to be able to present on that too and have that data. Excellent. Thank you. Any items of other business for this evening? No. Just sorry. Was there a report out from? So, so I will just say, we got the donation had to be accepted 
the scoreboard will not have the advertising on it. That seemed to be like, that will allow the process to go forward, but also still order the scoreboard. So then what will happen with the advertising will come out of those meetings. Because I think at some point they were gonna put the advertising on the board itself, but that, we stopped that. That was one of the, the options. options, right? Not, not so the scoreboard will just be the scoreboard. Ascendant down. Thank you. All right, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second? <laughs>